there was a back and forth, back and forth of situations that they are recapping, you are recapping, and and you cannot you cannot get the point to stay in your in one side. And here's another important thing that I wanted to talk. Do you see how the American side is using mines to defend the point? And in this case, there's even a machine, uh, a guy with a machine gun inside, and that's a very hard situation to to try and uh, and clear that that uh, little uh, little room because it's almost Im impossible. I would not say impossible, but if you're alone, he has an advantage. You gotta go in the room, and he's just shooting. You. But going back to the situation of the mines, you've you've been seeing through all out this game that um, and here I'm relaying information again I'm saying to my team there's an MG guy inside the room be careful uh, information is power guys put that in your heads the more information your team has the more uh, decisions they can make um, that will not lead uh, them to their deaths okay so back again to the pistols and I'm sorry from jumping from subject to subject but as I see the important things, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say something about. Them. So the pistol thing and killing the mines with the pistol. You can do it with the pistol. You just shoot at the mine, or I, I do that to save ammunition from the MG. But you can do it with any weapon, um, uh, any firing weapon, basically. So um, if you see a mine and if you see that the mine is from your enemy, blow it up, mate. Just blow it up because you are saving. Ultimately, you are saving lives. Because you notice the mine, here I die again, in a mine, so they were defending it <laughs> really well. I even say, man, for real, it's like the fifth or, or the fourth time I die from mines. Uh, if you notice a mine, the probability of someone else noticing it, it's not 100%. The guy might not be even looking at the ground. And if you saw it, blow it up, because there's one last kill that they're going to have, and... Uh, you're basically conserving spawn, um, spawn, uh, spawns for uh, for your troops. So uh, mines, pistol, MG it. I don't care. Blow it up, unless they're yours, um, and thus preventing um, more enemy kills. Okay, so here I looked at the map, and as you see, I'm writing something. I looked at the map and what did I saw? I saw like, I don't know, four, five, six players from my team camping a house that's just, you just got like a couple of meters into the point. If you gotta leave someone on a house, like leave two players, the, the other four go and cap the point. We need pressure on points. And and as you see, this, this battle is uh, really problematic. And here, another guy with a bazooka. And see, I took a direct hit. Look at the life I lost. Was it worth it? I don't think so. You know? Do not use bazookas, as I said in the, the last tutorial. They're a waste. But uh, people, I see, I, I, I keep people, uh, I keep seeing people that use that tactic for some, uh, for some situations. Here I'm relaying the position of the enemy health track to the tank, in hoping that the tank, uh, can go and destroy it because he was um, doing some nice cover on the road there. And uh, again, bazookas, no go, mates, no go. Bazookas for uh, destroying uh, equipments, not to attack infantry. Okay. Uh, here I uh, heard some shots and I thought, oh my god, they're trying to take C2. This is even going to delay more the attack. And uh, but uh, the guy did his job. He got the enemy, and uh, we're back on the attack. And by now, uh, and and I think this is a particular uh, particular point from the this C3 is that it's a bit hard to flank. You take a a, a big amount of time. You go through an open field. Uh, it's a whole mix of situations that can go uh, really bad for you. Uh, they got a perfect. Uh, they didn't have tanks, thank God, because if they did. I think uh, we would not have won this uh, the, this uh, game, and uh, here's a spoiler, we eventually break the defense. But here, you saw on the left? Did you saw that? Do you remember about the two friends that were playing with tanks together and they were a bit cold and the, the Americans were together? What did you just saw on the left? Two guys from my team, two tanks like two meters apart from each other. What is that, guys? 
Use the tanks for cover. Do not use them as, I don't know, two horses that are trying to race each other. There's another mine there on the ground. Here we go. Blowing it up with a pistol. And it's clear. And there's another mine there. And uh, I'm going to blow it up as well. Saving lives, mate. It's all about saving lives. There you go. But did you saw the two tanks? Man, that is important stuff. If they know they're flanking us from B3, leave a tank covering the iron bridge and the other tank go and covers uh, uh, the flanking part. <laughs> For the love of God. That's my comment. <laughs> oh man, sometimes I, I get a bit over myself. I, I, I don't want to be rude with people, but... And here I'm, I'm telling them what they should do. Uh, cover this point from the right, and I'm saying, Tank, go and cover that. And the dude actually uh, um, understand what I was trying to say, and he actually went there. I actually check on the map, and there he goes. Can you see the tanks going? And they're together. Look at that. Spread them out. But they are going to the point where I told them to go, and thank God for that, there's still some people uh, in these games that are not uh, averse to uh, hearing, um, not orders, but suggestions from players. Uh, and here we had a guy on the other side of the bridge. And I, I, and I say straight away, cap the point, we got C3, we gotta move to the other side or this game is not gonna go anywhere. Uh, and then I compliment him for the nice work, the foresight of uh, being ready to take uh, the other point uh, as soon as we capped this one because this game was horrible. And then he eventually died and I was like, oh man, we're back again to the same situation. And they were recapping C3. But the tank was doing his job, he was covering that area, so you cannot expect more from people that they are doing their part. Uh, sometimes uh, it's just too much for one dude to do alone, you know. So here we stop the recapping. I'm trying to see where the firing coming in. I see at least two guys coming in from the forest. I can only uh, shoot at one at a time. Uh, and then I decide, okay, I gotta, I gotta have some faith on my team. I gotta go for C4 or... or we're never going to leave this situation here. So, I eventually decide to go ahead. And that's going to happen really, really soon. And uh, I think uh, I'm going to get some more ammo and uh, I'll be on my way. Okay, so as you see, um, and you probably have been noticed that, pay attention to the pressure. Look at the bridge. There's no one on the bridge. How can this be? You know? They're like, where are the dudes? They're all coming from B3. It's the perfect flanking position. I cannot stress this enough. Look at it, Look at how easy I crossed the iron bridge. It's like, it's almost a joke. And then I see a guy placing a mine. And he's dead because he's not paying attention to where he should be paying attention. And there's a mine. And kaboom. Mine down. So, no more defense in this situation and here and, and from this point on I'm gonna try and cap C4 uh, and this is also a bit tricky to do alone but uh, and then as soon as I cap C4 I gotta keep mobile from because from this point on the Americans are uh, they got caught by surprise they were not expecting this take uh, this um, takeover and I gotta capitalize on that I gotta be fast and safe in capturing uh, the other points, and that you're gonna see that that exactly what I'm gonna do. So we already talked about all the points I wanted to talk about, and this is the final one: is being efficient at your job. Your job is capping the point, cap it, and move straight away out of this point into the next one, and let the the troops that are coming a bit on a uh, on a uh, on uh, the background like. Uh, uh, your reinforcements to deal with the defensive it. because if you if, if you stay there it's going to be hard okay so here we go choosing the inner route safer than than going from uh, on the outside part and here I always a bit careful on the police part and then I cross over to the other side and get the cover from the, the stone wall 
and go straight into the police. This is one of my um, uh, most used approaches, I would say, is coming in on the building through the back. You know, that gives you uh, a bit extra cover. I did that jump there because the lag from the table looked to me like it was a machine gun. <laughs> but he wasn't. Not in any danger of the table shooting me. Okay, so here I'm just saying to my troops, I'm at O, so go, 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 move up, do not stick too much to a position, and if possible, uh, I I'm trying to imply that someone should go to the church straight away. And here I'm going to do a tutorial about this as well. I'm going to do a tutorial how you should fight inside the buildings. And the police station is quite a, a played area because it's one of the final uh, capping points. And I love to be in this staircase. You can basically have a visual on the free entrances on the police station, unless you're playing as an airborne and you come in through the roof. Uh, but the people that are walking, uh, like the common human, <laughs> will come in from one of the free doors. And from this position, you got a perfect spot in terms of killing the enemy, because it's like it, you gotta come over the corner, see if you're there, and then realize that you're an enemy and shoot you. So, as I said before, there are three things you gotta do and you are just pointing and shooting. Pointing and shooting. How simple can that be? Uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta acquire a target, you gotta identify you as a target, and, and actually hitting you and killing you, you know? It's a lot of things to do. The simpler you can make your gameplay, the better and the, the better results you will have. So here I, I went out of the police station in hopes of going for the church and then I see that they are recapping the police station again and I'm thinking, oh my god, this team has been having so much trouble in terms of holding points. I gotta go back and I gotta try and deal with this situation. And uh, here I go again and there's an enemy inside and I'm trying to see if he's at my position, he's not. So I'm trying to figure out where are you dude? Where the hell did you go? And really careful checking out where he is. Did not find him yet. And then I got a friend helping me out and then I see the shooting. And actually I was a bit late going into the room because I did not actually uh, realize where, where he was shooting at. But I could have helped a bit more but the guy did an excellent job with the pistol. That player knows how to play inside buildings in my opinion because he's probably playing with the K98 and what did he use inside the building? The pistol mate. He used the pistol and when I play with the car, the K98 I'm going to show you exactly that. So we reached the end, we managed to uh, with a single line manage to uh, get hold of this town and uh, as always let's just uh, summarize what we talked about in this movie uh, the four important points and uh, and then we'll be done. So basically, what what did you guys learn in this uh, in this uh, little tutorial? Um, you guys learned to uh, first of all, and I think that's one of the most uh, important things is uh, relay information to your team. If you see a tank, if you see a bunch of enemies going to a certain position that they might be even out of position, they might be flanking. That is an important piece of information that you should definitely relate to your team. Information is power and the more information you have the better things will go. So that was one of the points. Uh, the other points and you saw throughout the, the movie was uh, destroying enemy mines. So basically use the pistol, use uh, your main gun, use whatever you gotta do to destroy the mines except for your own body. Uh, <laughs> but uh, destroying the mines as you saw each mine you destroy, it's a life you save. So keep that in mind. Even though you do not get points for that, but uh, it's really important to your team. Uh, one other thing is, and the, the health tracks. Do not use them as your own recreational vehicles. They are important to the war. They are um, expensive. You should not use them lightly. You know, you should use them as they are intended to be used. They are intended to be a mobile spawn point, not an artillery uh, vehicle, not a, a shooting vehicle, not definitely not a ramming vehicle. And uh, use them correctly. You see that uh, things on 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 your games will go way smoother. And finally, and this is particular to this uh, to this tutorial is uh, the situation that we had from a natural flanking point and that was uh, the B3 
all the people coming from that point and not coming from the iron bridge um, itself so if you see that you're in this type of situation okay people go for the bridge leave a contingency of, of, uh, of troops defending uh, the point itself but if you're using tanks or something use them to cover uh, the entrance uh, the flanking point they are using because you'll see that you'll have great results in holding the point and you will not be caught off guard okay so uh, those are the important points I wanted to talk about in this tutorial and uh, we are done so uh, see you guys on the next one and uh, on the battlefield goodbye